Do you know what Einstein's definition of insanity was? It is repeating an experiment and hoping for a different result. And I think we all do that once in a while, but uh, a lot of students do that with word problems. And uh, these are the ones that have been complaining that uh, through the years they've always been, word problems have been hard for them, they never could learn how to do them, they're just it's really tough for them. Uh, but yet, are they willing to learn a new way of thinking about them? You know who you're talking about. So let's, uh, I want to really take on this issue of word problems and uh, get you to understand how to work these much better than you, you ever have. And uh, there, it's almost like a deep, dark secret as to why people do so poorly at word problems or, or, or think they will do poorly. And, um, and I don't know why this isn't, uh, isn't better known, but uh, there's, there's one big reason. It's because people don't use units when they're working the word problems. The units are the little words that come after numbers like uh, feet or, or hours or gallons or minutes or things like that. You know, those are the units. Um, if, if you don't write those out, then you know, very often you're, you're going to make very silly errors. I have seen this for you know, a good 20 years of grading word problems. And uh, most errors made with word problems are units errors when people are trying to do something ridiculous and they have no idea they are because they're not writing those units in. So I'll give you an illustration in a minute. But another, I think another mistake, not not quite as uh, prevalent, but but uh, some students just you know will put an X down on the paper and start uh, trying to build an equation with X, and yet they can't tell me what X means. And so if you don't know what your variable represents, then well, how can you expect to do well? <laughs> Solving a word problem. All right, so uh, these things, um, you know, I've observed for years, and uh, it's it's my duty as your jungle guide and your math doctors is, is to try to get your attention on this, and uh, get you turned around on word problems because they're not that hard. They really are not, provided that you learn about the units, and, and how they fit together. And also, I think it helps to know sort of the you know the nature of these problems. Also, how do you solve problems? How do you build equations? I'll talk about that too as we as we go through all this. All right, now I want to get your attention on units. So I'll ask a question, and I know what everybody's thinking. What is one plus two? And you're probably thinking this is silly. Mm -hmm. One plus two is three, right? Um, no, not necessarily. One plus two is not always three. All right. Oh, well, wait a minute. Of course it is. No, not really, because if I have, um, let's see, one eraser and two pens, what is a one eraser plus two pens equal to? It equals three something, right? But you can't combine these, can we? Or how about one house plus two cars? Can you add one house plus two cars together and get anything that makes sense? You can't get three houses or three cars. You just can't mix those together. And so, uh, actually, one plus two does not always equal to three. And uh, now, it, it always does in, in math classes because we work in the abstract in math. And this always works provided that, that it represents the same units. So, for example, um, one pen plus two pens equals to three pens. That's okay because they're like units, like items. So. You know, 1 plus 2 equals a 3 works when you're using that to uh, add up the same number of objects. Now, how that turns into algebra, you know, here's how you end up seeing this. What is x plus 2y? x plus 2y is x plus 2y. We can't combine those terms because they're unlike terms. They're unlike terms because they have unlike units. Okay, you can't mix different units together. However, what is x plus 2x? That is 3x. That can be combined. It's because now we have the same units. So, you know, I can add 1 foot plus 2 feet and get 3 feet, but I can't add uh, 1 foot plus 2 hours and get 3 or something. 
All right, so um, as I work these problems, I'm going to write the units out every time. <laughs> and, uh, and I've done so in my book. And uh, because I want you to see how this relates, how they relate to each other. And uh, because, you know, the other dark secret is that all word problems are driven by units. There are no exceptions. It is the units which dictate how we calculate. Ignore the units, then you're very likely going to make, you know, a very good chance you can make a mistake. So let me give you some examples of things I've seen through the years. Many, many times I've seen people take miles per hour and add hours and get miles. Okay, <laughs> no good. Uh, I've seen people do this. Gallons plus gallons equals to percent. But what is a percent? Can you show me a percent? Yeah, I can see gallons. I can, I can, I can add gallons of water together, but I, I don't get a percent. I get gallons, right? So gallons plus gallons can only equal to gallons. And... I guess gals plus gals equals gals too. But uh, miles per hour plus hours uh, will never ever equal to miles. All right, so why do people do this? You know, I've seen it so often, and, and not a single person who ever did this had any idea that's what they were doing. Because I'm convinced if they did, then they would uh, step back a moment and say, well, that can't, that's not true. That's not possible. So if you don't write the units, then it's, it's easy to make these mistakes. And I'm telling you that uh, you know, most mistakes I've ever found with word problems are of this nature. And so now I realize students are not taught these things normally. Um, for some reason, the almost all public school teachers and many people in, in, at the community college level or the university level, even math professors, they don't write units. And so uh, most of us in, our, in my profession don't write units. Um, I can tell you that successful physicists and engineers always think about units. You know, that's their lifeblood of their calculations are the units. And uh, they have to match up or they know they're getting total junk, worthless junk. So uh, physicists and engineers, it's important to them. It should be as important in mathematics, especially when you're teaching how to apply mathematics. All right, so I've got to get your attention on this and uh, try to inspire you not to work in ignorance because my students who were never taught units make these mistakes because they were living in math ignorance. <laughs> but uh, after you learn about them from me or, or whoever, um, if you're not writing the units, then that's just plain laziness, isn't it? It's either a, a physical laziness or it's a, or it's a mental, more likely a mental laziness because, well, no one else does that stuff. And that's just a lot of writing and it just doesn't mean anything. Okay, so it's easy to convince yourself that you know, it's a waste of time to write these units in. Oh, it's confusing. I don't want to mess with it. Um, I would say get over it. If you want to get good at this, then you need to really pay attention to how units are used. All right. Um, likewise, I think it's uh, real important when you start off a problem to um, define what you're looking for. You know, for example, um, I've seen a lot of students, and they'll, they'll do this, I think, just to humor me. Or, or maybe they think it makes sense to them. They'll put something like uh, x equals six dollars, or maybe they'll put x equals to uh, balcony ticket tickets. Uh, so suppose it's some kind of word problem where you're supposed to solve for the number of balcony tickets and uh, tickets on the main floor, whatever they're called. All right. Um, I just realized I wrote baloney tickets. Okay, it's supposed to read balcony tickets. I'll fix that. Well, what, what's what's the issue here? If these tickets sell for six dollars a piece, then why would you call that X? All right. If you're solving for the number of balcony tickets, then that's how you should define X: the number of tickets, number of balcony tickets, not X equals six dollars. All right, here x has already been solved. Why would you, why would you even call it a variable? This is a little better, but but it's not specific. It's the number of tickets. 
in, in that type of problem. So, that, you know, that, that's an example of what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, we, we read a problem, read a few times to get sorted in your head what's going on. And then uh, I, I think your first step after that should be to write down the variable um, or variables that you're using, you know, define them and define what they mean. And, and, but don't forget about it. If you get stuck, go back and look at that again and think about it. You know, are you using that variable correctly or are you using it incorrectly based on how it's defined? So uh, those, I, I think, are important considerations. Uh, if you call t, the variable t, the, the time for a trip, and you end up getting t equals to 40 miles per hour, <laughs> then there's a mistake, isn't there? You know, you're supposed to get hours for, for time, if, if that's what t has been defined as. All right, so um, some aspects of problems of the uh, word problems. You've got to think about units, <laughs> define your variables, and um, you also have to learn how to put it together, and that, that's sometimes a kind of a tricky part. Um, in order to solve a word problem, you have to create an equation, sometimes more than one equation. If there are two unknowns in a problem, then you may need two equations. Actually, you will need two equations. If there are three things that are unknown, you're going to need three equations, ultimately, to solve it. So, um, the... Uh, <laughs> um, to, to, to build an equation, what is an equation? An equation is two different ways to say the same thing. I have a left side equals a right side, and there are two different ways to say the same thing. And so um, that's sort of what you're looking for. Now, I, I, I know I'm speaking really in the abstract here, so let me, let me leave more discussion on that to the specific examples. But finally, I also want you, if you're my student, I expect you to communicate the answer. So suppose you're you're calculating um, hmm, how many tickets were sold. I'll go back to this problem. There were balcony tickets and, and main floor tickets. How many tickets were sold of each? Maybe that was what the book, what the question is looking for um, that you're supposed to answer. And so, you know, don't give me this, x equals to 68. What does that mean? You know? And what about the, if that, if that actually are the number of balcony tickets and how many main floor tickets did you, did you were sold in, in that problem, hypothetical problem. So um, I want you to write a sentence, okay, because I'm going to approach these as if I am naive and you're just bringing me this work and I'm supposed to read it and figure out what in the world you're talking about. All right, that's my approach. Now, if you're doing pretty good math, then I can follow what you're doing. And yes, I know what you're doing, but um, I'm going to grade it as if I have no idea what you're handing me and I'm supposed to interpret at least your conclusion. So I want your conclusion to be in English. I want a sentence, okay, and it has to have units in there. You know, if the answer was 68 balcony tickets, tell me 68 balcony tickets. No, don't tell me 68. Um, and finally, a sentence begins with a capital letter, ends with a period. Okay. And, and it has to have good spelling and, and you know basic punctuation and grammar. Um, but uh, you know if, if you give me a bad English sentence, if you're my student, I'm going to take a point off or two just to just to annoy you into getting a better habit. And uh, because those things are are important, you know, part of your college education is learning how to become a better communicator. And so uh, that's that's part of the job here. And we don't ask a whole lot in math classes as far as writing. I think, uh, you know, one sentence for a word problem is not asking a whole lot. So, okay, well, that sort of lays out um, my philosophy of how I'm going to approach these word problems. And uh, in this section, we're just going to concentrate on two types, the rate, time, and distance problems, and another type of problem, which are, I think are called work problems. And so uh, that's what we'll focus on in, in this section. And, um, Let's get started.